that stronghold that we bang through. He that break us, sharp and there's anointed like they raise us. Send us out in the earth with prayer, music, and word. Slaying dragons to dirt and stomping them to the curb. Man was full of his glory, snapping, have every curse. Keep the going for sir, cause I don't mean to disperse. Your battle strapped in your armor, helmets on and we blazing. Place in place with our shields, for the devil we facing. Running gospel to nations, rocking truth like a station. Way throwing the swords for Christ the King, he amazing. This is the Gospel Wave from Monday, and today's the 17th, and you know what that means. It's the day before the 18th. Okay, that was corny, I'm sorry. I have not been to bed in a while, so if my jokes get a little bland, please just bear with me. Because I want this show, this particular episode, just for you guys, I want this episode to... Be more praise and worship. Now, you know on the network we got a praise and worship show already. But I want want this show, I want to, and I I get in these moods, I want to bring and heighten up the gospel and gospel wave. You know, I mean, as always, you know, we crack jokes, we have fun. You know, we we just, we show that Christians can have fun, be as goofy as we want to be. But at the same time, we can still rep Christ. We don't need to sing to have fun. But as always, you know, I try to not skip, I'm trying not to skip around as much anymore because everybody seems to be bearing with me but my buddy Ken P. So I'm going to try to, like, straighten this one out. I do got a message, as always, this morning. The Lord has brought something to my attention over the past week, man, and uh, it's interesting. Now, if, if you guys have been tuning in, you know, obviously, thank you for tuning in to the network. It's awesome, you know. each Every last one of you guys is a blessing to us. And, uh, you know, because of that, because you guys tune in, we try to bless you guys. Just want to throw that out there. <clears throat> but, no, um, the Lord has brought this to my attention. Check this out. Whenever you're trying to accomplish something or get something or move forward, you ever notice that it just seems like, man, I should be here in life. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is a little raspy today. But, like, man, I should be here in life. I really want to be here. I always told myself at this age I'd be over here or I would have this or I'd be able to do this. And, you know, let's even take it to a deeper step that the Lord told you that that's where you need to be and that's what you're, that's what you're going to be doing. But you just ain't, you're just, you're just not there, man. It just seems like, man, what, what I'm doing, it doesn't seem like anything is really working out for what I need it for. I'm not attaining my goals. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I thought I did, but it's what I'm doing is not working. So now, the Lord will come to you. And I'm just going to give you a real example from what's happening to me right now so that you guys can relate. So this is more intimate on my part, but check this out. When I came back to Pittsburgh, I had uh, I, I used to go to the local library a lot, and I would like literally check out 10, 15 books at a time. I mean, we're talking about my messenger bag and my backpack full. And they're like, you ain't going to read all that. You want to bet as soon as I got home, man, I was doing nothing but studying book after book after book about the music business, the radio business, entertainment all around, because I need to know exactly what I'm doing and what everybody else is doing so I could try to do the successful things and, you know, push away the things that won't work. <clears throat> now, that's on the business side. So when I went to go return... Uh, several of the books, the Lord came to me and said, read this one book. Now, this was last year, mind you. Read this one book. Now, something's in that book that he wants me to see that's going to help me for, like, uh, move along and progress a lot more quicker in my career. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to definitely do that. You know, I'm excited now because Lord, when the Lord gives you direction, you get excited because you know something's about to pop off, you know. You know you're about to succeed in an endeavor. Hallelujah, somebody. 
But see, when the Lord tells you to do something, your flesh starts acting up. Then you no no now the devil the devil ain't gonna read your mind and your your flesh ain't got no mind. This ain't you know Harry Potter with the little talking hat. But in addition <laughs> to that, you start you tell somebody and there just happens to be a devil near. Next thing you know, the devil knows about it. So now whatever you told somebody, he knows. So now you got the flesh and the enemy coming against you. Now that's two enemies against you, and you if you like me, you're in the habit of handling things yourself. You don't count on having to pray to God for stuff because your first thing is like, okay, what can I do to fix this? What, what can God do? But nevertheless, staying on track. Um, so the Lord tells you to do something, your flesh knows it, and then you say something so the enemy knows it. So, you know, he, he, they come against you. And it's always something, you know. I would if I didn't have to, like, do this so much, or I would if I didn't need to get this done first, and then after that's done, something else pop up. Now i got to go over here and do this, that, and the other. And you start straying away from what God needs you to do. Now, this is going to sound like I'm jumping around, but I'm really not. So to bear with me for a second. There was a guy who always came home and talked to his mother, said, Mom, I'm going to buy a car. And she would say, there's a car outside. Now, the car outside was beat up. It was on bricks. You know, it wasn't about to go nowhere. And he's like, what's that guy doing anything with nothing? It don't work. I need a car that works. She would never tell it to him. Again and again, Mom, I'm going to buy a car. You got a car right outside. You know, he's trying to figure out. And it left him to actually figure out what he had to do or what she was trying to talk about to accomplish his goal. And then he realized, if he's going to get a new car, he's going to have to fix up that old one. Get it out of there, you know, take it off take it off the bricks and put it on some wheels so, you know, you got to put some money into it, fix it up to work, sell that. So that's what he did. He fixed it up. He sold the car after everything was fixed and it was working again because he wanted a nice car, and he sold the car for just enough money to put with what money he had saved up to buy the new car that he actually wanted. Now, relating that to the story and what's happening with me right now, my epiphany, and what happened with them is that we were instructed on what to do. You'll find that with addiction, with uh, finding the job, everything. Everyone will tell you what you do or what to do, but no one will ever tell you how to do it. It sucks, I know, but it's a fact of life. Now, <coughs> excuse me. the whole thing about it is this. You have to figure out where you want to be. You know, you have to have a dream. Now, if the Lord or somebody who's wise, like your mom or your grandma or something, you know, tells you what you do, what you need to do to accomplish that goal, do those things. Because if you don't do those things a year from now, you're going to be right where you're at now. See, check this out. I could have read this book a thousand times over between the time that the Lord told me to do it and now, and I would be so far progressed in my career, it wouldn't even be funny. I haven't made it through the first chapter because something always comes up. I got to do this. There ain't enough time because I got to do that. So I didn't do what the Lord told me to do to get to where I want to be, so now I'm not where I want to be. You guys with me on that? Y'all following me? If you don't do what you need to do to get where you want to be, you're not going to be where you want to be. It's going to be trying. It's going to be work. It is. But if you don't implement the things that God tells you to do and if you don't implement the wisdom that the people who've already been there and done that tell you you just well i'm gonna do it my way i'm gonna do it this that and the other you're not gonna get nowhere man because you gotta think if i would have done everything that god told me to when he told me to we wouldn't be on this radio network right now we would have an international i don't even know how all that worked but we would have an international uh network for all of these shows 24-7 broadcast at least 10 different networks in every country on the planet. But I didn't do what the Lord told me to do, and now I'm still, right now I'm where I am now, which is where I was a year ago, and where I don't want to be next year. So in the conclusion of all this, I really, I seriously encourage you, please, pray to Christ. Pray to Jesus. He's always listening. You know, ask him what to do. But when he tells you what to do, be obedient. If you get lazy, if you allow the flesh to flame up and you get lazy about it, you won't do what he told you to do, and you'll be wondering why everybody's surpassing you. Everybody's doing this. Everyone's doing that. 
how come nobody wants to do this with me, but they want to do it with you, and I'm bigger than you are? Because you didn't do what God wants you to do, so you're not where God needs you to be to bless you with the things he wants to bless you with, which just so happens to be the things that you want to be blessed with. You see how all that coincides? It all comes back to you. So get up, do ask God what to do, and then when he tell you, keep the faith, encouragement, and keep the strength to do it. And I tell you, man, there's a lot of times I don't want to get up and record. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I know I need to to keep my career going, but I just don't feel like it. I just want to sit down and watch movies all day. So I'm not going to lie. One of my prayers to God, and it happens all the time, man. Heavenly Father, please give me the motivation and the strength to just get up and do it. You know, forget all these other things. Stop everything I'm doing and just do it. That's easier said than done when you got the enemy and your flesh trying to get you to be lazy. And I know i got to cut this short because I'm over time. But, I mean, it wrapped up in a nutshell, I know it's going to be hard, but you have to do it. Pray for the motivation. Pray for the strength and encouragement to do it, man. Because I'm telling you, if you do, it's going to be so much better than what you think it is. You think it's going to be cool to, if you're in my position, you know, you think it's going to be cool to actually go on stage and rip the stage up and be like, yeah, man, it's like awesome. We we done killed the show. Everybody had a great time. And then what? You know? You're still stuck where you at. You went on stage. You got what you wanted. But now you ain't going nowhere. You might got a little proceedings from the tickets and whatnot, but you're still not selling music. You're still not doing the things and making the moves that you need to make. Then you look back, and you have one of those William Wallace from Braveheart moments. You look back many years from now down in your bed to come back just once, just to come back and say you can take our lives, but you never take our freedom. Or in this case, you know, you you can take my body and, you know, slaughter me if you want to, but you can't take my salvation, and you cannot take the thing that the Lord told me to do. I really want to go more into that because at the end right there I just jumped around, but in the conclusion is this. Do what it takes to get where you want to be. If God tells you to do something that has to do with where you want to be, follow God's instruction. If you don't, a year from now, you're going to be right where you are now. If you don't want to progress and you're happy with your life, do what you want. But if you want to move forward, be obedient to Christ and let him guide you. Do what it takes right now and go through what you have to go through to get where you want to be. Otherwise, you're not going to be nowhere, you know? Well, nevertheless, I'm going to jump into a song now because I kind of like took up a little bit. If you guys remember last week, we had Mia Rio on the show. Shout out my friend. She's from GA, originally from Brazil. And uh, she sent two songs, 30 and the other song I can't remember. Well, she sent me a third song. <laughs> She sent me a third song, which is uh, one that everybody knows her from. It's called Dynamite Love. So we're going to check that out, and we'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gospel Wave. And if you guys want to tune in today uh, through the phone, it's 646-716-7958. Press that one key, and that will let us know that you want to come on live. And I, and I challenge you today. Come on live. Five minutes of your time today. Yeah, at work, go to the bathroom, you know, whatever. Tell us your testimony, man. You know, what has God told you to do? Did you do it or did you not do it? And either way, what was the repercussion? Tell your story and give God the glory on how there was a shocker because God got it right. You feel me? <laughs> but let's jump into it. Dynamite Love by Mia Rio.
and gentlemen, huh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you, the, the, these are friends of mine, yes, yes they are, and they go by the names, uh, check this out, the Doctrine Nets, oh, oh, oh. Oh, no, 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 and they're all oh, the way from Canada, no. Texas, and Alaska, it's like, no, I'm done, <laughs> No. Y'all going to excuse me, man. I ain't had sleep in a minute. I'm feeling goofy, but you know what? The Lord, the Lord has really had me inspired this week, man. This like last all last week, I was inspired to record. I was motivated. You know, I was making moves and whatnot, and you know, it's been on my heart to actually tell everybody the message uh, that I told them today. And for all you guys that's trying to tune in. Uh, it is work. We are having some difficulties with people listening from the links. I'm not sure what's going on, so just go ahead and call the number. Come join us anyway. That might be a sign to God or from God saying to come join us on the air. Tell your testimony. <laughs> Give him his due credit. But nevertheless, man, y'all been motivated and, you know, it's been on my heart to tell people about having to do what it takes to get where you want to be. And uh, there's just been so many times to where God has told us to do something we either don't do it or do the exact opposite, and we don't get nowhere in that particular thing. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you guys, um, we got Evangelist Kim from Alaska. We got my buddy Ken P., who's my main co-host, and we got uh, Pastor Kent, who is a pastor from Canada. Canada. <laughs> Canada. That's what Canada. I said, Canada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, with you guys, man, let, let's. Who, which one of y'all got a testimony? Did God ever tell you to do something that'll help you achieve a goal, and you just didn't do it, or you just jumped right into it and did do it? And what was the outcome? Go oh, ahead. Hey, I'll let Ken talk. <laughs> no, you go first. Ah, uh, I went go let. No, it's your turn. No, it's ladies not and my gentlemen, turn. just ask Kim to go first because she was the first one to say something. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You go first. Yes, I've I've done a lot of times. I've, uh, well, actually, let's use an example today. I really didn't want to come to the show today because I've had a lot of uh, some complications going on with my other half. But I actually heard the Lord actually, not just do doctrine asking me to do it. I know He wanted me to do it, so here I am. There you go. Okay. Uh, now, not that not that I'm trying to sound unappreciative. I'm just trying to figure out how that was relevant to the question. That yeah, is relevant to the question. Think about it. The Lord would want me to do it anyway, regardless of the fact that I don't feel like I'm up to doing what I should be doing anyway. I want to be in evangelism. Why would I not do what I, what I should be doing anyway? So I went against what my flesh was saying and went ahead and did it, even though I might not have felt like it's something I wanted to do. So here I am. Oh. Now, did anybody else just get no, the sir. feeling like she was scolding me while she was saying that? Nope. Wasn't asking uh, you. Could be. <laughs> could be. It sounded like she just came out in authority and was just, she wasn't even telling it to me. She told it at me. I'm like, damn. Well, to everybody. Hey, you know, sometimes we do something, sometimes we have those feelings, we just don't want to do it. But the question is, that's our flesh saying, don't, uh, you don't need to do it. Well, people all do depend on you sometimes. So including you all my team. I should you, be man. well I'm not supposed to, I'm not supposed to be slacking back, I'm supposed to be stepping forward instead of falling back. It's calling back sliding. I shouldn't be doing it. Uh, well, God right. tell you to do something, man, and God talks to you, your flesh know it. Because your spirit Oh yes. Just just to give you guys an award like an idea of what it's like. It's like when God talks to you, your spirit starts getting happy and your flesh is like, What what no, nah, we ain't about to be happy. So then you speak <laughs> yeah, it out loud sure. and then because you spoke it out loud, there might have been a demon there that heard it. Now he's doing the whole little messenger thing back to the devil, and now you got the enemy and the flesh against you, man. They just be tripping sometimes. And I still want to get. I mean, there's always was, going to be a reason to backslide off of what God told mm-hmm. you to do in the first place. But eventually, if you do it, you feel better about it. That's how it always seems to work. Okay, so I, so I, so, so we'll see you for the rest of the week, right? <laughs> I should hey, be. I'm just playing like, music in the background. You know no, me, I don't ever play no music. On, it's me trying to get on the the blog talk. <laughs> I'm going to do the best I like can right now. I was about to start cracking it on everybody. <laughs> Look, 
pretend you didn't know what's going on because you ain't been around for a minute. Ed's up in the hospital again, so I've been concerned about him. Oh, okay. Yeah. He had a little bit of, a, little bit of an attitude yesterday, so it's sort of put my attitude in a bad place. Well, what happened? What happened? Oh, Lord. He's got a bleeding ulcer, and he just got done with a surgery a little bit ago, and also now that he just came back through it, they're starting to do a physical therapy, so he gave me a little bit of an attitude yesterday, so it got me in a mood of not wanting to do anything. You know how that goes sometimes. Yeah. It's like, okay. Forget it. That's well, why. We'll keep, we'll keep everyone in a prayer. <sighs> yeah, prayer is a do. Powerful have a weapon, rough time. Man. No prayer to the Father goes unheard, man. I just hope and pray, but, you know, when he starts pulling through and start doing what's right, he wouldn't be in the situation he was if he wasn't taking ibuprofen as much as he was, long story short. Well, I kind of figured that. You can't take that much ibuprofen, yeah. Yep. Bleeding ulcer in his uh, small this intestine, I think. This is kind of personal for a live radio show, y'all. Eh, nah. It's a truth, nah, though. Not that well, it is on my show, so we just going to keep moving rolling. Um, <laughs> so check turn. this out. No, nah, no, nah, I gotta get Ken so, now. Come on. All right, Ken, go ahead, man. Uh, well, yeah, I, yeah, I guess it was. I guess it was a um, time way back when. Uh, when uh, oh. Uh, okay, now nah, hold on, man. Here we go. There was a time, but it back was way the back then. Ain't nowhere near me now. <laughs> I don't <laughs> no, disobey no, God no, now. Nowhere near me now. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, think about it. When you know when uh. I lost my family. Uh, yep. I know God wanted me to continue, but I, I didn't. And uh, uh, I went, I went back into the world and started doing drugs and all kinds of stuff. And uh, uh, I did that for like three years and uh, trying to kill myself, and that didn't work. So you know, uh, I decided to get, I decided to get right again. So. Yeah, but the Lord told ago. you to keep ministering the gospel, but you kind of just gave in and gave up, <laughs> and then went straight back to your uh, to your addictions. Well, no, no, I wasn't doing addictions. I never had addictions. Okay, okay, I never had addictions. See, I lost my wife and kids to a Palestinian bomber uh, when I was when I was stationed in uh, Israel, and I gave up uh, and. Uh, I decided to do drugs, okay, because I didn't, I, lo- I lost my oh, wife. Oh, this was the first time. Kids. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I lost my wife and kids for, again, and, and see, back then I was a rabbi. I wasn't, I wasn't a pastor. And, uh, and I was in the military, and I was stationed in Israel for that purpose, uh, at the, at, at the U.S. Embassy. And, um, well, I lost my wife and kids on a, on a Palestinian, on a bus to a Palestinian bomber, uh, I kind of gave up, and uh, I didn't. I you know, I didn't have the strength of Job to keep on going. Okay, so uh, uh, I decided to give him my, give up my military career and everything, and so um, what happened? And uh, but you know that's okay. I got back into it, uh, but and I converted over to Christianity. Uh, but it took me three or four years. See that that right there, man. I mean, you, you're gonna end up going through two types of things, man. Not nah, three types. You're gonna go through stuff that the world's gonna put you through. You're gonna go through stuff that you're gonna put yourself through, and then you're gonna go through stuff that the Lord is gonna have you to go through. All three in which will come out to the end, in which you'll become a stronger person. And then when you do finally find God, or if you've already found Him, you just backslide it. And you come back to God, man. He has a graceful place and position for you in the body of Christ to do your job, man. He always mm-hmm. calls you back to the ministry. Yep. Amen. Well, we'll try to remember that scripture. Who said something about a sheep and what farmer ain't going to leave the 99 to go find that lost one? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, that was that was about Jesus. That was a parable about Jesus. Uh, he, um, you know, it's the night, it's, it's He's got he's got a hundred sheep. One gets lost. He has to go out and get that one sheep, one sheep that got lost, and bring it back to the flock. So that way, yep. so that way, wolves 
wolves don't eat it, um, you know. Uh, but it's basically talking about the lost, the lost soul. It's a parable. I mean, I well, I was that using that as my own parable today. <laughs> Where if you that lost that. sheep and you kind of backslided and you just kind of like you, you found God, you give him a hug, and then you run the other direction, you know, he, he's still coming there walking after you saying, come on, come this way. Stop going this way. Come my way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's yeah. That's that's the job of that's the job of every pastor, um, okay, or, or every reverend or minister that um, is to guard your guard, is to guard your congregation. If one decides to go off the path and get lost, you have to go back and bring them back in. You know. We ain't got or, that in the know, church I'm, congregations I'm, no more, man. You know, you got huh? someone that comes there and then they don't feel comfortable there, so they leave or they fall astray. Everybody just kind of like boo you out, don't want you to come back. Then when you come back, you feel like the oddball. So, I mean, yeah, well, we're going to we're gonna have to bring that up as a topic at some point. Stuff ain't right, man. That's not, <sighs> not even anywhere near the way God wants us to treat each other. Well, of course. I mean, but see, that's, these, these are bougie Christians. Bougie okay. Christian. <laughs> bougie well, Christian. Yeah, they, 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 these they Christians is bougie. <laughs> <laughs> they're bougie ghetto. They're bougie and ghetto. They think this stuff is better than everybody. Okay, and and you know what? I'm sorry to say, but there ain't nothing better about them okay, than the ones that left. <laughs> what are they gonna say? Well, you know what? My God is better than yours. We got the same God. <laughs> Explain that. <laughs> one half of them, one, one part of the Trinity is better than the other? Explain that. <laughs> it don't work like that. <laughs> no, I want, I want a pastor to explain that to me. Well, the Holy Ghost is better than the Father. Explain that. <laughs> well, I don't have to. It just is. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Ain't nobody worried about all that. <laughs> but now, nah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, everybody's welcome, man. Even if you're not Christian, you know, uh, you got questions about the Bible, questions about somebody's testimony, you know, just feel free to call in. Five minutes of your time can make the rest of your day shine. You never know. 646-716-7958. Press that one key to let us know you want to come on live. And if you don't press the one key, then, hey, just you can listen in on your phone. You know, maybe you're just waking up and, you know, it's just one of those glorious mornings. You're just now waking up making breakfast. Just go ahead and put it in on your phone and call in, put your headphones in and make breakfast while you tune in. You know, you can multitask and still get some of the some of the gospel wave. You can still ride on this wave. We got some new music. We got a lot of new music actually. I just uploaded, but this next song that I'm going to play, I'm dedicating to Ken P. Mm-hmm. Take that. Because this kind of song, <laughs> don't nobody oh, no. know. <laughs> he said, "Oh no." <laughs> This kind of song, man. I felt, look, I was I'm building the Gospel Wave website, which will be up, Lord willing, this week, y'all. Um, I was building the site, and I'm sitting there just listening to music from YouTube, and I found a song that dude was giving out free downloads. So I went to download it, and the song is actually called. Let's see if I find it right here. The song is actually called Gospel Electro Wave. I looked up oh, Gospel yeah. Wave, and that came up. I'm like, uh-oh. This is going to be like some sort of techno stuff. It is a little bit, but it actually has singing. This is right up Ken's Alley, and it gives, it makes me it gives me energetic just because, you know, the style of music. So we're going to okay. play Gospel Electro Wave, and then we're going to get Ken P's thoughts about this because he's, uh, he's, he's, he's very eclectic. He loves different kinds of music. So, ladies All and gentlemen... Right. The Gospel Electrowave.
things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Let's praise him for that. Yeah. Yeah, yes sir, let's go. I know this like my brain, pain in a broken heart. I shed my share of tears, plus I got loads of scars. I've had my ups and downs, my rises and my falls. So sometimes people ask me how I survived it all. I tell them about my Lord, let's get it understood. My king controls it all, and he does it for my good. My savior brought me, then gave me new life just in his name. Now that he get me, I know that he'll bring me through the oh pain. Yeah, we don't normally play music like that on this network, but hey, everything changes, man. We got we got two assurances in life. One, everything changes, and two, Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. You know what else is going to change? Check this out. I've got a few songs here that we haven't played. I'm going to play one more song before we come back in live in effect. And this song is more of a worship song. Long story short, I was watching a uh, sermon from Joseph Prince. And I definitely recommend him to you guys that actually love, uh, enjoy televangelism. But 
he actually sang a song in the end, and I made a post on Facebook the other day, you know, because I was looking at his congregation, man. I was crying myself. I'm like, man, everybody from different races and cultures coming together from across the globe to come together in one, you know, area, one unity, and worship in Christ is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen, man. And so this song is uh, called um, See His Glory Come Down. And, you know, I, I've never heard this song before, but when I heard it, man, I got hooked. This is like my new praise and worship song. It's something that you might actually uh, find the choir singing in the church. So I want to play it today for you guys, and Lord willing, it touches your heart like it did mine. Amen. 
Amen. Say, man, prayer life. Something funny about prayer life, man. And this is this is what Joseph Prince said, like, right before I came back up to Pittsburgh. It just really resonated with me. Now, he said, and I'm just going to cut to the chase on this one. He said that God is the only person that can be everywhere in the universe and be with every living thing on the planet. He can be here, he's over there, he's on Pluto, he's in a black hole somewhere, he everywhere. But he can still be with you like you're the only person that exists. Now, he ain't he ain't go to there, he just said like you're the only person in the room, but I kind of like took it up a notch. Uh-huh. But I mean, it's true. God is omnipresent no matter where he's at. He can be with, he is with you like you're the only person that exists. Amen, Doctrine. Yep. All right, cool. I appreciate that. <laughs> Nobody else was animated, so I had to interact with myself. <laughs> that's radio. That that that. Well, radio. you know, you can always say, "Can I get a witness?" <laughs> oh, okay. Because I'm black. You know, y'all see. So, so it's, it's the it's the Caucasian ethnic persuasion that say, "Amen," and then keep going. But the African American persuasions be like. And we got to do this, that, and the other. Can I get a witness? Whoop, whoop. Right? No. <laughs> no. I think can I, get a, can I get a witness all the time? I ain't and, never heard you say that on none of these shows, dog. Well, yes, I say it all the time. I ain't never heard it. You really pay attention when I say can I get a witness. When I'm, when I'm, when I'm in church, when I preach sermons on Sunday, I say can I get a witness all the time. That's Pastor Kent. Pastor Kent? He doesn't have to ask me. I usually am a big mouth. I'm just being quiet today, so. Okay. Why is everybody so depressed today? I got to come. I'm going to come to everybody's house and, like, just throw a bucket of holy water on everybody. No, no, no. Okay, our God is not dead. Our God is alive, so we got to act alive with him. If I get going, okay, you're never going to talk, okay? So I'm just behaving myself and like a good boy, okay? Oh, he's um, behaving himself. <laughs> well, you can, you can at least answer the question, Kent. You can say. I, I did, and okay. I always support you, okay? Uh, always. Uh, and, uh yeah. He doesn't have to ask me because usually I chime in when when and we usually think a lot alike. So we're we're, we're like that, you know. That's why I love preaching with him so much because we think so much alike. It's so cool, you know. It's <laughs> like uh, I'll be sitting there saying something and he'll be finishing it, or he'll be sitting there saying something. I'll be finishing it. It's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, you know. But yeah, I say, can I get a witness all the time? Okay, you can you can I mean, remember you know, something. Okay, I, I, I was, I, when I first started preaching, I started preaching at AME Zion, Zion Church. So, I mean, come on now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, I'm there for 90% of the shows that you do, man. And the one Ooh. thing you got to remember about me is I always pay attention sometimes. Some of the time. Yeah. No, uh-huh. no, nah, nah, you missed the word always. I always pay attention sometimes. Some of the times. Uh-huh. I know, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I mean, so here's the thing. Somebody had told me, man, uh, and this is a shout out to everybody, man, uh, that's tuning in. You know, Gospel Wave has been nominated for the best radio show of the year and the best morning show. Whoever nominated us, man, you know, God bless you. I'm, I appreciate the fact that you tuned in. And I'm was, I, I, I'm not going to lie, man, I peeped the competition. You know, I know it's not a competition to ministry, but it's awards, so we in competition. I was looking at all the competition, man, and I'm like, ain't no way we're going to win. You know, we got all these huge networks that have like 50,000 followers, 150,000 followers. I'm like, man, they got people tuned in, you know, worldwide compared to us, man. We look like the small fry, the small guy. But they said something. This was another one of those dumb moments. They said, you never know how God's going to bless you. Now, I'm already feeling like this. It's just a blessing to be nominated up with them. That means we're doing something right. 
You know, we're not a traditional gospel radio show. We just do what we want. Um, but the fact that we were actually up there, that, that's an honor to me. You know, I've never been nominated for something like that in my life. So I'm like, hey, God just blessed. Even if we don't win, you know, at least we know we're capturing folks' attention. By the way, everybody go out and vote. The Spin Awards. Are y'all voting yet? Because if not, go ahead and vote. <laughs> Me and Ken P have been, we've been holding it down. But nevertheless, <laughs> um, you know, we, we were, we're really honored to actually do that. And so whenever my friend told me, you never know the way God's going to bless you, we might not win this thing, but the blessing doesn't come from winning the award. The blessing is going to come during the journey of trying to get the award. We bless somebody to want to nominate us. We bless somebody to want to vote for us. We bless somebody, and we change the life. I just found out that someone that I, well, I didn't just find out, but the Lord made it like an epiphany last night. Somebody that I used to really, really be close with down in Tennessee has a 16-year-old son. Now, this was years ago, man. I was always drunk when he seen me, but I was still, you know, trying to rap about God and stuff. He's a little bit dubious about God. and like, I don't know, man, because I mean, God and drunk alcoholics, I don't know. You know what that kid's doing now? That kid got a part-time job at 16, and he goes to church four times a week. Oh, he actually wow. saw a piece of he saw a piece of what I was doing, and no matter what I was doing, I still represented Christ in what I was doing, except the drinking part. And it actually had an impact on his life. It planted that seed that is now growing into a tree of faith. This kid's gonna be the next uh, Joel Osteen, you know, just you know, preaching the truth though. But nevertheless, you know, we've got, we we never know whose lives we're going to touch, who we're going to bless. And you never know how God's going to bless you because if we spend a million dollars every day for the rest of our lives and we only touch one person's heart to praise Christ and truly accept them as the Lord and the Savior, we've done our jobs. And the three things yeah. to say to that is, number one, hallelujah. Number two, God is good. And number three, shout out to IHOP. Now, if y'all if y'all happen to work at IHOP and Church's Fried Chicken, tell them we want our paycheck because they might as well be sponsoring us. <laughs> we bring them up way too much. That's right. Mm-hmm. We we want our moolah. Or if we we don't get any moolah. At least Church's at least free Church's Fried Chicken and free IHOP. Yeah, I want free pancakes. <laughs> yeah, chicken. Yeah. Y'all gonna have me tripping. <laughs> But yeah. no, um, so check this out. Is anybody familiar with a gospel singer named Danielle Renee? I've heard the name. Man, you've heard everybody. Sure. <laughs> Every time I bring <laughs> someone up, I heard the name. Ain't that this person? I'm sitting there like, man. Well, you got to understand, I listen to a lot of music. I listen to a lot of music. I'm very, like you brought up, I'm very eclectic like that. Okay? Man, it's. You either eclectic or psychic. I don't know. I don't believe in psychic ability, but sometimes God talks to you and tells you things. So I guess in a manner of speaking, that's about as close to psychic as we getting. Well, that's right. Well, you know, I mean, well, you know, I mean, I'm not, I don't, I don't claim to be no psychic. I don't have no sixth sense. I just know that, I just know when God talks. Okay, I listen. Amen. Does anybody? Does anybody else got a sixth sense? Because my sixth sense actually, you know, started tingling when I saw a UFO. Oh, man, you saw one of those? Man. Yeah, I'm not even joking, man. I'm dead serious. I saw a UFO. It was literally oh. flying in my bedroom, and it hit me right in the face, and then it wasn't no longer the you part. It was a bug. I just never seen that kind of bug before. <laughs> oh, I thought, I thought somebody might have been throwing, might have been throwing a Frisbee. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Ooh. Out of nowhere, a frit. Look, man, if I'm just sitting there in my bedroom and out of nowhere, a frisbee just pop out of nowhere and hits the wall, I don't even own a frisbee. All right, first of all, I'm rebuking the devil because I don't think the Lord's going to throw a frisbee at me. <laughs> Secondly, I'm out this house because I don't know if y'all if y'all happen to notice about me, but I'm I'm kind of, you know, I'm black. Mm. I ain't fitting to sit here trying to talk to ghosts. 
Hey, let's see if we can get these demons to communicate. Let's see if we oh, can no. get a ghost to move this bottle. Man, if that bottle uh-uh. get up and start moving around, I'm out. You're going to see a trail yep. of cartoon dust coming off the ground. I ain't fitting to mess uh-huh. with that. I'm, I'm outro. I'll be right behind Man. you, too. Yep. Mm-hmm. I ain't fitting to play with the devil. <laughs> Mm-hmm. All that ghost and UFO stuff, man. It's the devil trying to mess with you. But no, nah, um, for you guys that don't know, Danielle Renee is a gospel singer. Um, I've actually reached out to her, and Lord willing, we're gonna have her on the show pretty soon, and we'll actually get the, uh, you know, get her testimony on how she found Christ, what she does in the ministry, how she does it, and what her overall goals are. And we're going to start having our guests, you know, talk about how they achieve their goals and how they are achieving it and how you guys can do the same thing. Because there are way too many of you guys out there that are just like us, you know, starving artists or, you know, I can't do this because I don't have this. I don't have this. so I can't go over here and do that. You know, you've got to use what you got to get what you need. Start off small. You stay faithful with it. God will bless you with more. Uh, I don't remember how the Bible phrase it because I ain't a Bible thumper. That's Pastor Kent and Ken P stuff. But I learn from them every show I do with them because they're always talking about something that I need to hear. So, you know, God blesses. Nevertheless, um, we're going to play a couple of her songs right now. And the first one we're going to play is Desire. Um, I've actually peeped her last album. And if we get her on the show, I would definitely send a link out to everybody. You guys definitely want to check her out. Unique music, fantastic singer, and has one of those voices where you can't really have her sing and ten people at the same time sing and not tell who she is. She sticks out as a singer, and that's what I love the most. When you stick out and do something unique, you know, it's just amazing. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is Danielle Renee's Desire. Is to worship 
everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to Real Talk for Real People. I'm your radio host, Rachel Loomis, on the Gospel Wave. So how are you all doing? I hope you're having an amazing week. I know I am feeling just blessed to see another day. God is good, and His grace is sufficient. I want to just encourage you all to make sure you're calling in and voicing your requests or maybe specific topics that you would like to be discussed on Real Talk for Real People. It's not just about my thoughts, but it's your feedback. Um, So if there's something you're going through where you would like to, um, you know, maybe have it discussed or have me bounce off my thoughts or encouragement to you, please feel free to call in. We would love to hear from you. So I really would like to touch on the subject this week on being a comfort to others. It really means a lot to my heart because I have went through a lot of things in my own life personally and I see a lot of brokenness around me of people I know, family, friends, um, just as I drive down the road, you know, see panhandlers everywhere, see people living on the streets, pushing carts with plastic bags in it. You know, let's be real. We just pass them by majority of the time. You know, we feel bad, but, um, you know, what do we do um, when somebody's hurting? And that's what I really want to focus on of talking about this week. I personally would like to share with you I went through some tragic events in my life, and I at one point wondered if I had purpose or destiny, if God really loved me. The pain that I was in, um, I just couldn't see the light. I, I was surrounded by darkness, and the hurt was so deep that it made me question anything I knew about God. And that was the strategy of the devil, to try to steal, kill, and destroy what God had purposed for my life. I'd always loved the Lord, but I fell into situations that caused pain. And for one, I was in an abusive marriage for 12 years. I had lost my home, um, pretty much became homeless, and my friend took me in and uh, I had to get split up from my kids and you know different events that have happened with my even my music career where uh, in the industry where unfortunately I had experienced great loss and through it all I questioned God where are you like does anybody love me do I still have purpose why are all these bad things happening to me And although I was questioning where I stood with the Lord, if he still loved me, he still was working out a plan and a destiny for my life, regardless of the things that were going on. So somehow I kept going and I kept my faith in the Lord. Yeah, sure, I was depressed. I was downtrodden. I was, um, you know, discouraged with some of the outcomes, yet the loss that I endured, God has worked it out for my good. I share that with you and be open and honest because a lot of us try to act like we have it all together when on the inside or surrounding us, all hell is breaking loose. And we're like, okay, I love God. Why are all these bad things happening? And we start questioning, you know, am I doing enough for the Lord? Does the Lord not love me? You know, and that's not it at all. You know, sometimes we just have to stand in faith and trust God that he's going to bring us through. And it may not happen on your timing, but it's going to happen on God's timing. And his timing is perfect. Now, in my situations, my help and my comfort didn't necessarily come from the people that were in my circle. God used people I didn't even know, strangers, to come along in my life and along my path to help me in different seasons of my life. It 
he would put compassion on their heart and they, you know, some people would even say, I don't know why I feel such compassion or I feel so compelled to help you when they didn't even know me. And that was a sign that God loves me, that he sent this stranger and put it on their heart to help me. And that just touched my heart so much and encouraged me to help me get through any time I've faced situations where it's caused pain and heartache and I just didn't think I was going to make it through. He'd always would send somebody to comfort me, whether it was in word or deed or to help me in some way, you know, whether it was to fix my car or give me a ride somewhere or, you know, sow a seed into my life. And in those situations where I was so disheartened, God caused somebody else to have love for me and show me that, hey, people do care. So going back to the subject of being a comfort to others, we see so many people in this society that are struggling financially, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and it breaks your heart. There's kids that don't have enough food. There's kids that are abused. There's women that are being abused. There's men that are losing their jobs and feeling worthless because they can't you know, provide for their family. I mean, so many different scenarios, um, you know, others that are having health problems, um, a mother that's just trying to scrape up, um, you know, enough money for rent, and she's already working three jobs and has five kids, you know, and the dad's not helping. So many scenarios that we could go over. But all in all, it comes down to us making the responsible decision of being a comfort to others. We always want help when it comes to us, you know, when we're in trouble and, oh, God, help us, or we're reaching out to friends and family, hey, can you help me with this? But sometimes we get introverted and and we, we hesitate when it comes to helping others. I've been guilty of it, and that's why I'm encouraging you and I, to do better. We've got to get better at being the light. How can people know about Jesus Christ if we don't make the conscious effort to be Christ-like, to be a comfort to others when they're hurting? There's so much hurt in this world and so much hate that people need to see the difference. People need to be the difference. And I just want to make it a point for you to think about the problems that you've gone through in your seasons of life, how God has helped you, how he's he's comforted you, how he's brought people into your life to give you an encouraging word that I've been there for you. When you couldn't see the bright of day, when all you could see around you was darkness, where you didn't think that there was hope to get out of the situation that you were in, But God helped you, and God sent people in your life to comfort you and encourage you to keep going. That's what I'm just trying to encourage you and I to be better and to be the light that people need. Encourage somebody, hey, I see you're struggling with this. Is there anything I can do to help you? You know, can I make a phone call for you? Can I pick up a couple of groceries for you. You know, if you see an old lady trying to put her groceries in the in the in the car and she's struggling, you know, help her out. If you see somebody walking really slow across the road and and traffic is coming, you know, stop, and maybe help them. You know, it's are we that busy that we don't have the compassion of Christ anymore? We need to stop. Take a deep breath and realize that there is more to this life than the hustle and the bustle and not forget how God has come through and brought you comfort and brought you help in time of your need. I want to leave you with this scripture. It's 2 Corinthians 1, 3-4. It says, 
He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. It's so important to remember. just want to encourage you to be a comfort to others. I'm Rachel Loomis on Real Talk for Real People. Have a blessed week, and we love you.
Amen to that. I just love uh-huh. I just love a good song that, you know, praises God, exalts his name, but also keeps a really good rhythm to it. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all on the gospel wave and we have our special celebrity guest Joe Thomas on the line. So if you want to call in and ask him a question at any point during this interview, feel free. Six four six seven one six seven nine five eight. Press that one key you can ask us something, ask Joe something, or hey. Just raise the roof with the Lord. But we do have him on the line with us right now. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Ah, so far, so good, man. We are definitely blessed to wake up this morning. Amen. Amen. I'm barely awake, so you, though. I had a long weekend. You're barely awake, uh-oh. <laughs> well, at least yeah, there's that man, wake part, though. Oh, was you performing well, or something, or what, what happened? No, we had... Two concerts, Friday we had a concert, Hip Hop Hope, uh, Saturday we had one mixture of different styles of music, and then yesterday I was speaking at a rally in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, so that's a very jam-packed weekend. <laughs> Man, that's there great. You go. Oh. Well, uh, Joe, uh, 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 this is Pastor, this is Pastor Ken Kennedy here. Wrong. And um, so I, 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 I've been looking you up the, uh, the other day. I was wondering, how did you get started into 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 sponsoring, um, you know, uh, up 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 and uh, up starting artists and and putting them on the stage with other people that's been around for a minute? What made you decide to do that? Um. Well, I started doing this years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I started it uh, years ago. I started with doing the entertainment management years ago. Um, I worked on the promoter side, helped put the concerts together. Okay. All right. And uh, so then I kind of, I'm using it now to kind of help people. It's kind of, I just took things from my past and put it together the ingredients that God put inside me to help me help people. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Is it one it of those like, things to where it's like, you know, nobody it. helped you when you tried to do something at first, so you're trying to break that trend and help somebody else? I mean, it's just a Christian thing to do is really what it is. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, well, people don't do that no more, man. It's like, nobody helped me, so now I made it. I ain't going to help nobody else. So, yeah, we're trying to break the world's trends and replace it with what the Lord would do. What would Jesus do? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, um, exactly. So what what okay. is the Kickstart tour? Like, what is that in its entirety? <laughs> oh, the Kick It Tour. The Kick It Tour is a an organization that we use music to spread hope and awareness to the drug epidemic. Uh-huh. And we also um, we also help raise money. We give away fifty percent of our proceeds to uh, non-profit treatment based programs. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, awesome. Overall, helping awesome. somebody no matter what you do. Now, yeah. Ken, didn't, yeah, you I mean, just, didn't you just come from uh, Arizona or something, Ken? Yeah. I Doing mean, something I was similar? I was in New Mexico and Arizona. I was wondering, I, what what company did you actually work with? Because I know you was bouncing all over the place all weekend. Oh well, I I didn't work with actually a company. I was I was with the, um, uh, a collegiate uh, school. Um, um, I was asked to speak for about divinity and theology. Um, uh, it says I hold I hold uh, three PhDs um, and a master's degree in it. So um, it was for basically uh, young seminarians. Okay, that. <coughs> Uh, want to uh, you know get into that uh, and and further a little bit further, you know. Man, who uh, hosted it all though? Questions. Huh? Who hosted it? It was uh, it was uh, well, it actually was the University of Tucson. Tucson, okay. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was like some bigger thing. I'm thinking like between the kick it and between them, they might be able to get something because. 
Kick It handles a lot with music, but works with a, a million different companies to set things up. And from what from what he just explained about giving 50% of the proceeds to different companies, who are all of you actually giving to, uh, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, well, we felt out FOA, which is Family of Addicts um, out here. They're uh, growing to a national program, so we've done a few with them. We just did one with Whole Truth Ministries, which has a transitional house, and they're building another transitional house. And... Uh, so far, that's all we've really worked with because FOA is pretty big. I mean, it'll be it should be around the United States in the next two to three years in every area. Dang. So, wow! Talk about some real growth. And now, is this is this going to be um, a free to the public, or 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 is it, it going to have to be by insurance or? Um, the concerts. Uh, the, the I mean, concerts. I'm the the, uh, the treatment centers that you are. Donating to Oh, yeah, we're, we're donating to treatment programs that help out people that don't have insurance. That's uh, why we only deal with nonprofits. Okay, okay, okay. Great, because, you know, um, um, I have worked with the, uh, I've worked with a lot of rescue missions and uh, that have um, uh, godly treatment programs. Okay? And, matter of fact, the last one I was working at, um, I implemented a program, uh, uh, at a rescue mission to help out uh, people that cannot afford the, the treatment center, you know, the other cells. So I was just curious about that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, we're, uh, we've got, coming up, we got like a zombie walk that's going to go on with the walking desk and with, in Middletown, <laughs> yeah. Ohio. Okay. Um, so we're doing that. And, uh, I guess I will release the information. We're doing an addiction-based haunted house here. Um, It's going to show all the struggles from early adolescence all the way to active addiction, how you get into it, uh, and what leads you there. And we're also showing the spiritual battle. So we are going to be doing that, too. That's cool. That was really cool, yeah. 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 Are you do, do you are you plan on bringing this around the around the states? Or are you are you going to bring it anywhere to Texas? Um, the haunted house thing, not really. What we're doing this year is we're launching it, um, and it's going to have the entertainment side too, just like a regular haunted house would. Okay. Um, but what we're looking to do is we're gonna we're gonna have national coverage for it. We're hiring a big PR firm to take over, um, make sure that we get. Um, at least national, maybe international coverage with it. Oh, and uh, and then once we do well this year, we're going to sell the idea. Um, so we'll kind of franchise the idea and uh, sell the business plan to people, let them use it and so that they can uh, do the same thing next year. And we hope next year they can be in areas all over the country. Okay. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, I guess something like that is really needed to to raise awareness to drug addiction in this country because people don't really think about it that you know drug addiction and alcohol addiction is killing you know uh, yep. a one in five in America today. Okay. Yeah. And you're just not thinking about it. Okay. And 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 that type of uh, awareness on a national level like that. Okay. Uh, and we can we can get it. Spread around all over the place. That would be that would be a, a really great thing to do. Mhm. Yeah. yeah, that's kind of our plan. We've got a really good. Uh, she's a well-known poet in the addiction field. That's actually writing our script for us. And then I'm adding the entertainment side, working with some people that's created some multi-million-dollar haunted houses to come up with some of the entertainment side. Uh, um, so we're actually oh, trying cool. to generate through the. October, we're trying to generate between 1.5 and 3 million dollars. That's, wow. that's what our goal is. Um, haunted house industry is one of the highest paying industries in the United States. So, um, yeah. I worked at one when Everybody I was like 18. Exactly. I, I worked at one when I was like 18. Man, they were generating 1.5 million dollars a night. So, Woo. cash uh, money. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to say that, yeah, that, yes, they do generate some serious money. Uh, everybody oh. wants to go into the, into, into the get scared for some reason or another, okay, and 
Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is about that, man. Horror movies, haunted houses. If you don't mm-hmm. like heights, you want to go on the biggest roller coaster. We just like to excite uh-huh. our own fear, man. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> well, it's um, it's the fight or flight where it kicks in our adrenaline in our system, and it, mm-hmm. it's exhilarating, kind of like uh, drug usage, where you'll yeah. use something that will speed you up. That's really what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're definitely. If I'm not mistaken. Go ahead, man. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was just, I was just adding. Yeah, the yeah, dopamine kicks in, and that's, that's the um, adrenaline rush. Kind of flight response, you know. Okay, you know, basically. Mhm. If I'm not mistaken, uh, you actually have a large event coming up soon from now. Is that right? Um. Well, we've got one August twelfth. Um, should be pretty big, but our uh, big thing is going to be the zombie walk. That that thing's going to be huge. That's well, no, I, did, October I don't know. Uh, I was looking at uh, flyers like on Instagram, man. I was I haven't been to bed yet. I was up all night just doing a whole bunch of research on different things. And somebody posted a flyer of several uh, different artists coming together. That was from one of your events. It was um, oh, yeah. um Joshua Hip Hop Hope. Yeah, Hip Hop Hope. Are you talking about the Hip Hop Hope one? Yeah, I believe so. I know uh, Joshua Scales is going to be there. He had, he was actually on the show a couple of months ago. Shout out, my brother, by the way. Um, what's going on with that? Like, tell us about the uh, that performance, that show. Oh, uh, the Hip Hop Hope one. Um, the Hip Hop Hope is. Uh, we had a we had ten because one of the artists canceled on us. Um, but we had 10 hip-hop artists. We had a speaker, and we we got people to enjoy some hip-hop music while we uh, while we uh, got an opportunity to talk about the drug epidemic and God and what he can do for you. So uh, that's pretty much what the basis is. We're looking to expand that across the country. I've actually got an interview with somebody to take that over this week. Um because we want to bring it to school systems, youth programs, and you know, and youth groups cool. kind of like there. The country. Yeah. That's awesome. So, like yeah, kind of like there. I, I think you got a. I don't like there, but but better. I mean, there is a oh, yeah. useless program. Um, it's never really helped. I remember when I had it as a kid, and it was, all I did was make fun of it. It wasn't serious. But having somebody that seriously went through a drug addiction come in to talk about drug addiction. So, but we're not just going to focus on that. We're going to go to suicide, uh, oh, which yeah. is it's like one in four uh, from 15 mm-hmm. to 25 will attempt yeah. suicide, and one eighth of them will actually die. So uh, bring and, people, man. Cause y'all, y'all seen those commercials yeah. on TV of uh, older folks who, uh, you know, they can't breathe, or they got a tube in their throat, talking about they got it from smoking like X yep. amount of years. Mm-hmm. You're sitting there like, man, that could be me. But then at the same time, you're looking at your parents. Y'all look just about the same age, and y'all smoke 24-7, and y'all fine. So now it kind of makes me feel like, well, maybe I'll be fine, so let me go try it anyway. I mean, that kind of scare tactic just doesn't seem to be working anymore. But if you actually bring it to the kids and educate them and show them what it is and what it can do and why you don't want to do it and really interact with them personally, you'll make an impact. Yeah, I mean, our our goal is to have high-impact speakers that have a lot of velocity behind them when they talk, um, but have hip-hop that gets them involved, gets them dancing, um, gets them more attentive, and then we can kind of talk about the issues at hand thereafter. But our main goal is to show them what it's like outside of that. Um, Show them what it's like, you know, how you can still have fun without drinking and doing drugs or how you can still... uh, how you can be happy in your life. You don't have to be depressed. There's people to reach out to, and we're willing to do it. And then we bring the Hope Line with us, which is a app, and it's, they got a phone network as well, uh, with the Dawson McAllister group, and we bring them with us everywhere we go. Awesome. Uh, so, now, say if somebody wants to get um, involved with you guys, how 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 can they how can they um, get get involved if they want to you know volunteer time or they want to you know uh, work with you uh, and something how can they do that? Um, you can hit us up, Ticket Tour, Facebook, um, 
or you can go to our website, greatcommissionsolutions.com, and uh, you can go to the contact page and email or call us. That's the best way to get a hold of us. Okay. Right. Sounds good. Nigga, right. you guys got big things going on between now and 10 years from now, man. I mean, <laughs> you're doing it to help these oh. kids. You're doing it to help youth. You're doing it to help everybody involved and has a struggle, and you're doing it in the name of God. I mean, they're, that that's Definitely. just we ain't got enough people like you, man. We don't. Definitely. And we're, we're going to keep expanding our brands. Uh, I mean, I'm... I'm going to be starting a publishing company with it because um, I've got a book that I'm starting on right now called the Discipleship Manual uh, to teach people in the church how to help with addiction when you've never even been through addiction. Um, all biblically based. So we're, we're going to be releasing things like that. I'm um, talking about doing a movie in next year. So, mm, awesome. Yeah, we're going to be... I'm going to keep expanding until we make a difference. Our goal is to lower the percent of overdose by 50% in the nation. So mm-hmm. until we hit it, we're not done. I'll keep expanding until we do make a difference. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you still are tuned into the Gospel Wave. We're going to take a short break and listen to a song or two, and we're going to be right back. Um, if anybody wants to catch me on Twitter, it's Dr. and VVIP. Just message me through there if you're tuned in and want to hear a song, or if you got me on Facebook, just Message me there. We're going to have a poll on our website when we post it up. But nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back and we'll continue to ride the wave. Uh. Uh. I don't know why I feel so far from you and I I don't know why I feel I'm disappointed I just don't want to make you cry Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry The diary of a sinner Confessions of a madman, tears of a clown But the world is so much bigger And when you take the mask off and live unbound Then you hear the voice Oh one that's crying in the wilderness, but it won't solve anything. If you go through it, putting that race right to your wrist. Uh, Listen to uh, me, there's a reason uh, why we're living, reason why we're breathing, reason for the seasons that we've been given, a reason God's grace never forsakes us, cause all the mistakes are forgiven because Jesus has risen. A real chance to die, a real chance at life, a real chance to find someone like Christ. This a real chance to be completed and never defeated by the enemies deceiving. Now it's retreating at you and me. I don't know why I feel so far from you and I. I But don't cry, don't cry. I made a change back in 09 for life. life. I dedicated my whole life to Christ. Christ. And now I'm standing in the light that you shine. You picked me up when I was dead on the ground. You showed me it would be okay without making a sound. Jesus. And every time I think about some sin and I'm breaking your heart again, it's like I just came to tear your whole world down. You would never leave or forsake me. You would never hate me. You're the reason I keep chasing. Like David after your own heart. Lord. This whole world can't keep us apart. You died for me, so I live for you. It's just trifling what I did to you. My iniquities held you bound on that tree And you still find compassion to love someone like me I don't know why I feel so far from you I and love you, God I don't know why I, I know feel you're here. I'm disappointed I, love you, I just don't want to make you cry no more No more Amen That you love me, you keep opening doors for me that I couldn't see. Everything is owed to you when I couldn't see my way. You gave me the strength to make it another day.
if I couldn't imagine without you. When I'm feeling at my end on you, I can depend when I am all alone. You're there to pick me up when I fall. I know you never leave me. You sacrificed your life to give the very best to me. Oh. Somebody, that was Andrew hey, Carlisle with Only You God. We are back with Joe, who I have about a million questions for, but we ain't got time for all them, so I kind of selected a couple important ones, such as with these uh, events that you're doing to try to really raise awareness and try to steer people in the right direction. Uh, how do you work, or rather, what advice would you give folks who aren't able to particularly reach your events, they'd love to come, but they just can't make it there, whether it be finances or they just can't travel or whatever the case may be, they're homebound, but they do have issues or a million questions, you know, what advice would you give them, especially if they're already uh, struggling with addiction? Because you've been doing uh, this for a while well, and you definitely have major uh, goals that you will accomplish in the name of Christ. So what would you tell them? Yeah. Well, the first one is, um, if you went to AA and you've seen how that program works, um, throw out the higher power, because the higher power will make you fall every time. Jesus Christ is the the only power that actually works. And uh, I, I've seen a lot of people try it on everything else, but they're focused on everything else. Put it on Jesus. Allow him to take it over. Um, and make sure you surround yourself with... Um, good people. Surround yourself with people that's not in active addiction and uh, and surround yourself with just Christians alone. That will make a huge difference. Um, You are who you surround yourself. Just like the saying says, and it's a very true one, you want to be a millionaire, you surround yourself with millionaires. You want to not use drugs, surround yourself with people that don't use drugs. So that's, that's the main thing that I've seen that are very uh, that work very well. Um, also, if you need anything, you can reach out to me. Hit the Facebook page or the website, as I expressed before. If you need help to get through, to get to a program, something like that. I work with programs across the nation, so I can get you into a good program. And I know a lot of uh, independent artists who are still up and coming would actually love to get involved with you. So. For those of you guys listening, and I've, I've had plenty of you guys message me on Facebook saying that you're tuned in, we done made you laugh, but you're having a good time. You know, God bless y'all for tuning in, man. I mean, we keep going because of people like you. But this episode will be aired uh, at the very latest by Wednesday this week, Lord willing, of course, on YouTube. And it's going to have the links, all the links to the website. And do you have an email that people can reach out to you? Uh, yes. Yeah. C's and Charlie J's and Joe N's and Nancy seven B is a boy at Yahoo dot com. All right, we'll have that there as well, so that nobody has any excuse not to get a hold of him. And even if you don't work together, man, it's always blessed, as he just said, to surround yourself with the folks that you want to be like, in a manner of speaking. I don't want to be an alcoholic no more, so I have to surround myself with people that don't drink. 
out of mind, mm-hmm. out of sight, man. Now, uh, Pastor Kent, are you still with us, sir? I am. Now, um, this gentleman, Mr. Joe, he's working with a lot of uh, folks in a particular field of your special uh, specialty. Oh, I'm listening very intently. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to, I, I wanted to kind of bring you in because this is your thing here with addictions and whatnot. I uh, see what you're doing, Joe, in America is what I have planned for Canada Um, because I live in a city where there is as much drugs as Toronto, Ontario, Canada. That is saying a lot for a chosen few of 150,000 people. That's saying a huge amount. Okay, now we don't have the fentanyl problem like Vancouver and BC does, but we have cocaine, heroin, and a lot of prescription pills is what our problem is here, okay? And a lot of people are addicted to them, okay? It is an epidemic here, and we are so in need of something like that here in Canada. I mean, they have shows that are Christian shows, but not shows that are based toward drug addiction. And that's what we need, okay? Because there are so many kids, uh, 18, 19, and younger, that are getting into drugs. And it is really sad. Okay, and those are the people that I want to get. I'm in the process right now of getting into the schools to do um, uh, posts and do promos about drugs. So I'm in the process of doing the exact same thing you are in in America. So I would be, I'd sure be interested in talking to you one on one. I really would, man, you know. Yeah, if you want, I can give Dr. and my phone number, and you can call me, and we can uh, we can discuss this and how we could work together and team up. What well, is I would, thing. It's not a me thing. We I, can make a difference on our own, but when we well, team no, up together, no, boy. No, we can't. Amen. And, uh, I'm, I'm in a, a 100% agreement, Joe, with what you said about a higher power now. Many people in the city uh, use a higher power, and okay, I tried everything. Okay, I try when I first got clean. I tried everything, and the only thing that worked was I was raised in a Christian home, so I gravitated toward the God of my understanding. Okay, so and He has given me 22 years clean. Okay, by God's grace. Okay, and I make no bones about it. I've done nothing but turn it over. That's all I've done, you know. The same with me. I'm eight years clean off heroin, so uh, I, mine I know all too co- well. Mine was cocaine and heroin and prescription pills was what I was. Yeah, I mean, that's, we got to take it all from a, you. Right now, we got everybody on the line who was either a junkie or alcoholic. We was all something and got delivered by the, by, by our Savior Christ. Mhm. Amen. Yep. This is just I mean, we're, we're, how God brings His people together. Mm-hmm. Man. Well, amen. Well, we're I just, all. I just celebrated we my. All. I, I just okay. celebrated my thirty fourth year clean. So. Well, amen. if we, we look in the Scripture, we are literally all addicts. And what I say mm-hmm. by that is, uh, Paul tells you, I do I do what I don't want to do, and what I don't want to do, I do. He talks about that struggle of the flesh Romans and 7? the spirit. Yes. Romans yeah. 7. And he talks about that struggle that any addict what? will tell you is addiction, but we as Christians can also consider it as a fight against the flesh and the spirit. So we all are addicts, regardless if you... Uh, use the substance or not, you have something 
that's got a stronghold on you. The guarantee right. being humans. 100% guaranteed. So we can all relate. We just got to think about it a different way. Mm-hmm. Man, I really feel like... I don't know. I really feel like the person that I used to be was necessary for me to become who I am, but it was also necessary for him to die so that I can represent the great I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean... So, regardless, we all come out of the womb as sinners. It says that Adam came in the world with sin, so are you. Um, so we we are already predestined to be a sinner. It's going to happen. The question is, when you decide to follow Christ, and that's when a transformation, as Romans also tells you, you know, to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, test God's good and pleasing will. Uh, you really... That's where that process happens. And it's the same thing in addiction. That's what changes an addict to being an overcomer. And that's the term that I use because Jesus says, as I overcame the world, so will you overcome it. So mm-hmm. um, that, the way that it actually works is you start following after him. You create a new neural pathway in your brain. The old one will eventually die off, and the new one will create a renewed brain. Um, so... From neuropsychology, that's I use that from neuropsychology to show how scripture and your brain, how that works together so that you become the different person. And anybody that started um, as a Christian, before you were a Christian, we did some uh, pretty bad things. But once you become a Christian, your walk slowly uh, changes you. You become more like Jesus. You may not be sinless, but you start to sin less, and that's kind of uh, oh, that's good. Kind of uh, what I you mind if I swagger jack that yeah. off you on one of my songs? <laughs> Do what? I said, you mind if I swagger jack that off you one of your songs? <laughs> yeah, you might ahead. not be sinless, but you may you will sin less. I mean, I like that. Yeah, it's like I mean, a that's, company that's slogan. The goal. Um, so. Um, you know, that's kind of the, the thing that I, I preach to people. And I speak at different events, like yesterday, and everybody kept saying higher power. And uh, me and my girlfriend were both kind of shaking there with it because it's so annoying that everybody's like, higher power, higher power, higher power. And then our guy that we got our concert coming up with on August 12th, he gets up there, he says, screw the higher power, I'm about Jesus, that's the only reason I'm still standing here. And I was like, yeah, mm. that's where it is. Yeah, so yep. we get to speak at these events and we get to talk about Jesus. And if they don't like me talking about Jesus, don't fight me to the event. That's how I feel about it. I'm not going to conform. There's Absolutely. no conforming for it. So I stand you know, strong in it. I, I, I used to be a big uh, NA uh, guru. And I was in a room that was a two year, a three year, and a one year. And none of them even talked about God. It was at that point that I knew that Narcotics Anonymous is never going to work for me because they don't talk about what works. They talk about this, that, and the other thing in the fruitcake and the, the, the fruitcake and the cupcake and all the uh, yakety do and the wackety do gods that are out there. Well, they don't talk about what really works. Okay, and I'm so sick and tired of that, you know. You need to wake up and smell the roses, man. You really do. Well, they talk about in in the rooms, uh, we don't care if a doorknob is your higher power. Just make sure you have a higher uh, power. And then my response is, what happens when that doorknob breaks? Because man. it will eventually break. It's scientifically proven that enough enough turns on that, on that doorknob, it's going to break. And when it breaks, do you break... If, you put your, if your faith is on this doorknob, you will eventually fall. They don't like me saying that, but it's an absolute truth. And no, it is. From no. them saying doorknob, if you know a doorknob, no matter how expensive it is, it will eventually break. It may be 100 yep. years from now when a doorknob breaks, but it's going to break. No. If your faith is on it, it breaks, you break. Yep. See, see, their example of a doorknob is not my example because... 
to me, a doorknob is a really dumb person and a really foolish person. And I'm sorry, I'm just not going to put my faith in that. You know, I just get to to uh, pray to an inanimate object. Well, I may as well pray to that church out there. I'm going to get the same thing out of it. You know. Uh, I can't do that I, I in life because the goddess of my table told me not to. Yeah. Well, I um, <laughs> um, I became. My story is I uh, I was children's minister, turned into an addict, turned into an atheist, uh, and that was kind of my journey. And part of my thing was I met Christ on the road, kind of like uh, Paul of Damascus. Um, but then the next thing was is I started studying into science, and uh, I started to get more scientifically driven, and we've got enough uh, evidence to prove the fact. I'm a very evidence-driven person nowadays, and uh, that's why I go over that scenario, because I look at it scientifically and to show you that it wouldn't work, um, and then I can literally show you when they say the doorknob thing, well, what happens when it breaks and I go to fall down? I mean, that's what happens to you. That's that's the physical thing that's going to happen to you, and that's the spiritual thing that's going to happen to you. Well, sure. So I try to use my, off my topic, faith man, and I got a question for you about that, actually, the whole yep. evidence thing. If you remember, yep. um, they had it all over the news uh, several years back. I don't even remember when it was, really. Um, it wasn't too far ago, though. Um, in a nutshell, they were talking about how we actually found the real Noah's Ark on a mountain where, and it's covered in ice something, but nobody's allowed to examine it. What are your thoughts on that? Um, it depends. Your your question is very vague. What do you mean by my thoughts on it? Well, like, do you really think that that could be Noah's Ark, or do you think that that's just some sort of publicity stunt? And if it is up there, we've got a lot of, uh, I'm assuming they're Muslims or whatever, that's stopping anybody from going up there to examine it. I mean, why are they yeah, tripping I mean, if their God is supposed to be real? Um, I mean, it's all a possibility that it could be or it couldn't be. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things that religions and governments do to put uh, to blow smoke so that we don't focus on other issues or that their government or their religion is very strong. And they've been doing that since Christ's day. It's like I tell people when um, Christ died on the cross. Do you not believe that there were people um, that the whole government was sending out everybody they had to go look for? Because his resurrection um, would have been the downfall of Judaism, which it was. It slowly started to uh, decrease in numbers. So do you think that that uh, they didn't go look for him um, because they wanted to be strong? And they still do that to this day. They do whatever it takes to stay strong as a nation, or as a religion. So it could be either or. I mean, I I haven't physically seen it, so I can't physically say yes or no. That's where my evidence lies. And so it could or could not be. Um, I know that there's been an ancient thing that's been out for years that said that there was a group that was going to protect the Ark and the Ark of the Covenant. It's just something I've heard over the years that there was a group that that's all they did. Um, yeah, so, well, you never, yeah, know. You never know. They've been looking for the Ark of the Covenant for many, many years, and they they still they still haven't found it. Now, the the, uh, uh, the original Ark of the Covenant, um, now there's been a, uh, a copy of the original Ark of the Covenant, okay, but the original, the original has never been found. Yeah. Well, it, it wouldn't work if it did. Uh, if you remember the story, I mean, it was only the Levites that could go in there. If you touch the sides of it, you'd die. Right. They had to pull you out. They'd stick a rope to you, and they'd pull you out. Um, so, I mean, there's probably a reason it hasn't been found. I mean, mm. uh, we would die. Because you know, you know nowadays people are going to explore, going to go inside every time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yep. it's like telling a kid not to touch something. You, uh, five mm-hmm. minutes later, they're touching it, and you, you already know that that's going to happen. <laughs> so you're going to see somebody going in there like, hey, I bet this doesn't kill me and touch the side, and they're, they're pulling them out with a rope that they can't go in. So 
I think there's a reason it hasn't been found. And if it has, it's being protected um, so that that doesn't happen because that can create mass chaos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, nah, man, we're uh, but, yeah. definitely counting down to the show, man. I definitely want to thank everybody that tuned in today. You guys are just awesome, man. Nominating the show, tuning in every week. And actually throwing your suggestions and your song requests at us, man. It's uh it's definitely a blessing to work with everybody and everybody always has the opportunity to call in or message us. Um I'm gonna ask Joe one more time just to reiterate and repeat himself a little bit about the links that you guys can go to and how to get in touch with him, uh, in case you wanna get involved with everything that he's doing or maybe you just wanna connect ministry wise. All right, uh, you can go to Facebook and type in Kick It Tour or on Instagram at Great Commissions, Great Calm, S O L, G R E A T C O M S O L. We're also on Snapchat. Is that uh, you can go to our website, GreatCommissionSolutions.com, go to the contact page, it's got the email, it's got the phone number. You can contact us there and uh, yeah, reach out to us, and we've we're going to be expanding our artists across the nation. We're expanding the tour across the nation. Uh, we're expanding the hip-hop division across the nation as well. We're also looking for very powerful speakers to add to our uh, our roster so that we can have it for the school systems and for the youth groups. So if you have one of those gifts, reach out to us. Um, by the way, guys, this is one of the best shows. I've been on uh, TBN. I've been on uh, satellite radio. I've been on recovery stations. I've been on Christian stations. I've been on stations all over the country. And this is uh, by far one of the best shows I've been on so far. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Man. We try and, to uh, not we, be real typical. We hope you come back again. Yes, please do. Yeah, sounds yeah, good. Yeah, you're it definitely welcome good. back any time at all, man. As we expand, yeah, it'll be a, a good one. Um, Doctor, and you've got my information. You can hit me up. Uh, you all should have my number now on there. So if y'all want to reach out or talk about something, uh, teaming up some areas, I'm down. I'm down, man. It's a, we're one body, man. We're just different parts. Amen. So one body with one love and one Christ, one God. Amen. Amen. The DSP. Amen. Yeah. The, the goal is finding gentlemen. what your body part is. That's that's what I teach people, man. Is to find your body part because once you figure out that you've got the finger and then you find the other fingers in the hand and you unite together, you're going to do ten times what you did before. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, as I, I try to show them you know, trying to pick something up with one finger and then trying to pick it up with your hands, how much simpler it is. Amen. That's, that's the way it works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we unite together and we can do anything um, through mm-hmm. Christ's strength. That's true. Amen. Jesus is the strength, man. Mm-hmm. But no, nah, definitely, man. You're definitely welcome back anytime you want, man. We definitely have to get you on one of these shows and have you co-host with us, man. You know, and special uh, shout out to everybody who's tuned in today, man. You guys are just amazingly awesome. Tell your friends, tell everybody to vote because we are like busting out with different award nominations now, and you know we're just trying to make a present in the name of God. But Lord willing, we will see everybody next week, the same time, the same place for Gospel Wave. And if you're listening to this Wednesday, remember, Jesus loves you. We love you, but Jesus loves you Mm -hmm. more. Amen? Yes, he does. Amen. Amen. God bless and one love, everybody. One love. Kingdom, precepts we mean them.